Hi everyone, it's Denise Balkanoff here. Um, I promised that I would show you how to make those beautiful ornaments that I've been inking for a show of mine. And um, they are all completed, although I keep making more. Um, but I wanted to show you the completed ones. I'm going to turn my, ca my uh, camera down this way. You can see them all in a pretty gold basket ready to go. And I just pulled one up for you. Here's a pretty turquoise one. And a pretty, let's see which one I fish out. It's a purpley one. And I'll do one more. And it has a lot of um, uh, what color is that? Um, <laughs> I'm having a senior moment. Wild plum. That's a wild, wild plum one. Oop, let me show it to you again. There it is. They have ribbons on them, ready for hanging and all set to go to sell at the fair tomorrow. So I'm going to show you how to do these um, in just a moment. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's get started on making some ornaments. Um, the two kinds of ornaments that I have used is they're two and a half inch balls. One of them is a clear ball and the other one is a frosted white ball. Both are glass. They have many different kinds to choose. I've only tried these two, so that's what we're going to do today. So of course you have this top part here that you can just take off while you're working on your ornament. Put that aside. And the hard thing is trying to find a way to put the inks on without getting them all over your hand. When I first started, I tried doing this. That did not work. Um, <laughs> and then I tried putting it on a paintbrush. And what happened was it just kind of twirled around. So the hard thing was trying to find a way to stabilize it without putting your fingers on it all over it while you were inking the ball. Um, some people have told me since I've done these balls just recently, I found out some people have used dowels and they've wrapped um, elastic bands around them so that they fit inside the opening and the elastic band um, keeps it from from moving around. So that's um, a really wonderful idea. Um, I do not have dowels, uh, so I um, came up with this idea last year after trial and error, and um, it actually works pretty well. Um, it's kind of a quirky way of doing it, but I'm going to share it with you in case you don't have dowels either, and in case this um, seems to work better for you. So what I did is I actually, I'm going to put this ball aside for a while is I actually used a plastic cup as my way to hold the, um, the ball in place. And as you can see, I have a star over here to show you how I, I uh, mark it just so that I can cut this and then I put the ball opening right in there. I'll show you in a minute how that looks. Actually, I'll show you right now how that looks when I... So here's a clear ball and it's being held by that that opening and it works pretty well sometimes they tend to they will pop out on me but most of the time they're not I don't have a problem and, they, and um, it's easy to hold this too it's nice and big and I, I'm holding um, I can hold the cup very firmly in my hand while I put the inks on so anyway this is the way I do it so all I do is I take an exacto knife and I cut through the cup carefully. Just like so. It's cut already. Okay, I think 
kind of make a little star and you cut through it. And then all you have to do is take your your ball and push it right in, just like so. And it holds it. It's wonderful. Looks like a little snow globe, doesn't it? So we're going to work on this one first. This is a, a nice ball because you don't have to worry about um, filling it up with anything. If you use the clear ball, like this one, you do have to, unless you want to be see-through, transparent, you have to fill it with, with um, something I usually like white inside. Last year I tried using acrylics. They didn't dry. I tried spraying them in, with um, spray paint inside. It sort of pooled inside and it didn't dry either. So the best thing that I used for this for the inside was just the alcohol ink. The uh, snow cap alcohol ink with a little uh, blending fluid and then I, I blow it uh, around inside. But the first one we're going to do is this one that doesn't require anything except put putting the inks on. And it's really nice because the inks come out almost metallic looking. They're really, really pretty. So blue is one of the favorite colors of all time for people when they're purchasing. So we're just going to go and put the inks on. No rhyme or reason, just put them on. And I turn it as I'm putting it on. Okay, so I have some blue. And I'm going to take some, I think I'll do some wild plum. A little wild plum on there. That blue was sailboat blue. And then um, snow cap works really nicely on here to bringing it all together. So I'm going to mix, I'm going to take the snow cap and I'm going to put on some lots of snow cap and I have some homemade, oops, homemade, um, sorry for that little shake, blending solution. So I'm going to put a little blending solution on and then I'm going to take my canned air and just blow it. Again, spots that have no color on them, or color, it doesn't matter, but I want to cover up those spots that don't have color on them. little blending solution, just a drop to help the inks flow. I hope you could see this. Okay, so it's almost covered, and that's pretty in itself, but I just love using the gold. So I have some pinata rich gold, and I'm going to show you how I use that. Now you can let it dry first and then use it, and you have you get different effects with that, but you can also just go right for it. So I, I bought a big bottle of, of uh, pinata gold on Amazon, and I just put it into little bottles like this. Okay, so a little drop of the gold and sometimes a little blending fluid sometimes I don't sometimes I'll put a little drop of ink and just let it flow when you put the ink on what's nice is that it will help the gold to break Hope you can see that I'm checking my camera placement. Just 
keep turning it. I'm going to use a little bit more blue because I wanted this to be on the blue side, but it's turning out more to be on the um, wild plum side. So let's get some blue into that. I have my camera pretty close. Okay. A little blue. Turn it. It's a lot of gold. Well, you see how the gold is spreading out. I would like it to break, so if we put a little color on there, it will break. And this one's pr pretty much done. More a white spot here. Let's cover that up. my hand hit it over there. I'll just put a little blue on there. See that? Got a little white spot there, so I'm going to cover that. Now you can get a good idea of what it looks like. And if it dries, I can go back with the gold if I see places that I don't care for and I want to have a little bit more gold in it, I can, or color, I can go back and do that. That one looks pretty nice. And that didn't take much time, did it? Okay, I'm going to put that one aside and let it dry. I usually take a look at it and make sure that it stopped, that the ink stopped moving. I've got some really pretty, I like that spot right there. Got a little glare here, but okay. So let's try the other one now. We'll try the clear ball and you can see the difference and how you have to prep that one. So here you have the clear ball. I'm going to do it right like this so you can see it better, I think. I'll turn my camera if um, I feel like I need to. So um, all I do is I 
take the, the snow cap, the white mixative, and I put a few squirts of it inside. And then, let me go and turn this because I keep on moving my hand. Hold on. Okay, that's good. Alright, so we'll put a few drops of the, um, this is homemade blending solution that I have, just to help the inks move a bit, swish it around a bit. Then I take my canned air. Now, some people have actually done their um, balls like this, and you can, but what I found is that when you put color in it, different colors, they tend to pool at the bottom, and also when you spray the can there, they tend to just all mix together. So it's really hard to get a beautiful flow of inks, I found anyway. So when, if you have secrets of doing the inks on the inside, you might want to share that with us. Okay, so that's part of it. Got to get the whole thing filled. And what's nice about using the pinata, um, not pinata, but the um, snow-cap white is that it will dry quickly. Not like the acrylics that we tried. The acrylics did not dry well at all. It took days and days and days, and then I found that they also tended to crack once they once they dried. This will be pretty much dry after I spray it. Okay, and there you have it. it. Looks pretty good. Ready to have some color put on it. I have to leave that little bit of white on it. So let's try a different color. Let's try some how about some amethyst? Turn this this way. Oh, look what I did. I didn't put it back on, on the um, cup. And of course, if you don't put it on the cup, then you get all your fingerprints all over it. And that's the whole purpose of the cup. So let's put it inside the cup. There we go. This cup has been used a few times, so hopefully it's still going to hold the ball. Okay, I've got lots of amethyst on there. And I think with the let's try some of this patina with it. That'd be pretty. Just like when you work with tile, it's probably a good idea to um, clean these with alcohol first. And I think the last bowl I did was having a few um, difficult times with some of the um, the ink resisting the surface. Okay, this one might also, because I didn't pre-treat it with alcohol. Okay, let's get some of a white that's really pretty together, that combination. Put some white on. Maybe too much white, but that's okay. We'll put on some more color.
But let's try and put a little patina on right on top of that. And then white spots on the top of the ball showing through so we want to put some ink on that ball is colored. I'm going to add a little bit more color over here. So I have a lot of white and a little of the fluid. ready to put a little bit of gold on this. Got some real dark spots here that are pretty also. Let's see how it looks. This one I'm just going to put a little bit of fluid. Watch it break. Don't forget to shake up your your gold. I'm going to try to get some Thing going over there. Give it a little something interesting. Looks nice. Let's do a little something on the top here. I'm going to turn my camera so you can see better. Okay.
think this one is just about done. There's some really pretty areas in it. And that's all there is to it. Then I usually let them dry for a little while and I'll take them out and I'll I put them on um, some sort of a dowel or I've used straws, I've used um, kebab sticks, skewers, and I stick them in a, I pierce a box and let them stand and just dry totally. Um, but really, that is it. We have two beautiful balls, and if you want to get the, um, if you want afterwards, now this one's pretty dry, if you want afterwards, you can go back in, like over here, and you can add a little bit more gold and it will be a little more stripey and that's really pretty too and then you can go in and just again add a little bit of your ink and it'll break really nicely it won't spread as much as when it's wet and I like that look as well see that I'm going to finish that one up in fact um, let's get some more gold at the top here. When it's dry, you get a different effect with the gold. One blends more, and one stripes a little bit more. Okay, that's a little too gold, so I might even just take a little blending fluid and help break it up a bit. I like the gold to be a little transparent with having those nice little edges around it. I think that's really pretty. beautiful just the way it is. Can you see how it's different now? The gold really kind of just looks like a little river going around the entire thing. Here it's a little bit more mixed in. Here you have more of a line of having lines of gold in it. Both, both are very pretty. So let me turn it so that you can see. See if I can turn my light so you don't have as much of a glare. Okay, so I'm trying to think which one. This is the one that we just did that is on the clear ball, and this is the one that was on the frosty ball. Both are beautiful, didn't take much time. Now, after after they dry, I will take them into my garage and spray them with Kamar varnish. And um, I, I did some today. I only sprayed one one um, layer of uh, Kamar, and then I did the UV spray, and they look pretty nice. I don't even think I need the the triple thick. I think it'll be fine. They're gorgeous. They're just so beautiful. 
and easy to do. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope I see lots and lots of beautiful balls. I already have seen so many beautiful ornaments that people have been making um, and people share their ideas of how they do them. Everyone has their own technique. And this is the way that I do mine. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I hope it helped you out, taught you a few little tricks here and there. And um, have a great time. These make wonderful gifts. They sell well at fairs. And um, uh, I just love to make them. Take care and have fun.